Hello, here we are with a hands-on with the latest Sony devices, the XA1 and the XA1 Ultra. Two devices announced at Mobile World Congress 2017 and soon to be available SIM-free from Clove. Now, we're going to be taking a look at these two devices in this video, giving you a quick hands-on and initial impressions of the uh, phones, give you a tour around uh, the hardware and the software. Now, we've combined uh, the two into this one video because they are very similar. They're uh, you know, ex essentially a, a smaller and bigger brother of each other. We've got the XA1, uh, which is uh, an improvement on last year's XA, and then we have the XA1 Ultra, which is an improvement on last year's XA Ultra. Uh, so the primary difference between the two, as you can probably see, is the screen size. The XA1 has a 5-inch Full HD display, compared to the XA Ultra's 6-inch 720p HD display. Um, there are a few other differences, which we'll come on to in a moment, but aside from that, uh, mostly it's it's all the same. So very similar design language here that we've seen across the Sony devices, the sort of uh, more rectangular kind of slab light -like design with curved edges. Um, We've got quite large bezels, top and bottom. We've got the Sony logo above the display with the front facing cameras. Um, and then a bezel at the bottom, we've got uh, no physical kind of buttons or capacitive keys all built into the software on the touchscreen. On the bottom of the devices, both devices now have USB Type-C for charging and data connectivity. And we've got the speaker down here on the right edge. If we take a look at the left hand side of the unit, we've got covers over what is the SIM card and micro SD card tray. So we can uh, get a fingernail and open this up. They're a little bit uh, fiddly sometimes. So if I pull out the cover here, I've got the SIM card tray and then I've got a micro SD card slot there. So both can or have the facility to expand uh, the memory uh, on these devices via those memory card slots. On the top, both of them have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and microphone, so they haven't done away with those headphone jacks as we've seen on some other mobile devices. And then on the right side, we've got the volume key up and down at the top sort of edge here. We've got the silver power button to turn the device on and off. And then both have a dedicated camera key, which is something we don't see on a lot of devices, but something that is synonymous with Sony devices. You may notice if you've seen other Sony Xperia devices that we're missing uh, the flatter kind of power button that has the uh, fingerprint sensor built in. Neither of these actually have a fingerprint sensor built in. On the back of the device, uh, you'll see that both have got rear-facing cameras with uh, LED flash. You've got the uh, NFC portion of the devices in sort of the upper center part. You've got the Xperia logo, and you've got this uh, matte black uh, kind of style uh, back cover. And kind of that's it for the sort of physical hardware. You can see the uh, how similar they are, but uh, how different they are in terms of actual size. So we're going to take a look at the uh, XA1 here. And I should note that these are pre-production samples. So some things may change between uh, what you see here and the final models. There will be a few different colors, but we're obviously demoing the black one here. So both are running uh, Android uh, operating system. Sony have made a few customizations here to uh, give you added extras, if you like. So you get standard things sort of as your phone dialer, You've got your messaging application uh, for sending your text messages. You have got the standard sort of Google uh, suite of applications, so Chrome, Gmail, Maps, YouTube, Drive, Play Music, Photos, and what have you, all pre-installed. And you can sign into your Google account on either of these devices within just a few minutes and have all of your contacts, calendar information, etc., on here. You've got a Google Play Store, so you can download all your favorite free and paid for content. If we jump into the app drawer, you've got uh, Sony editions such as their music player, their album, and their video application. You've got PlayStation Mobile, so you can uh, remote play with your PS4 on these devices, which is very nice indeed. Uh, you've got an FM radio, your calculator, and then you can uh, delve into the settings, 
there as well as some other benefits on here such as uh, Spotify, you've got Facebook pre-installed, Amazon Shopping, AVG protection, Kobo eBooks and you can see how you can um, create folders within the app drawer, you've got the ability to search, you can sort the apps, manage them, uh, you've got various settings. We can press and hold on the home screen here to change the widgets, the wallpapers, the themes and various other settings. So we go into the settings, you've got the effect or the ability to auto rotate so the device can actually be used nicely in landscape mode. You can uh, change the appearance of icons, uh, you've got different panel transitions. So there's lots of ways to really personalize these devices. You can have Google Now uh, turned on. Um, various different options there double tap to sleep so you don't actually have to press the power button you can um, just double tap the screen so now i can actually run this in landscape mode which can be quite useful uh, if you're doing certain things such as web browsing maybe playing a game um, you don't have to then orient the device back into the portrait uh, orientation you know you just carry on in landscape there's obviously lots of features built into Android that have been covered in many videos previously, uh, but one of the nice things that you can actually do with um, this now on Android 7 is to uh, run in split screen mode. So if I drag that up there, and then I might be able to have the settings, and you can see now I've got the ability to run the calculator and the settings menu side by side. This is exactly the same on the XA1 Ultra, and I can do things on both portions of the screen. I can resize it if I like to kind of uh, make it work for me and put it to full screen and then I can go back to my running apps. It's all there. Now both have um, got cameras on obviously, sort of standard Sony affair when it comes to the camera. Um, you get different modes, so you've got your manual mode where you can control a lot of the settings. You've got superior auto mode which is essentially your point and shoot and the camera does all the work. You've got video recording, and then you've got different camera applications to get more from the camera, maybe have a little bit more fun and what have you. I'm just going to drop down into the settings and just show you uh, about the phone. So you can see it's running Android version 7 here. This is the G3121. And then you've got all your Google uh, sort of settings that you'd expect, you know, your lock screen and security for pin and pattern codes. You've got your storage and memory. You've got a storage cleaner on here and Sony add lots of different little bits to make this uh, more valuable to yourself and we'll cover these in our full review. Um, so this one actually has 32 gig of internal storage as does the XA1 Ultra and it's probably uh, about time that I explain some of the other differences between the two. So obviously we've got the screens, so the 5 inch Full HD against the 6 inch 720p HD on the XA1 Ultra. The XA1 Ultra has 4 gig of RAM compared to the 3 gig on the XA1. Both have uh, both have dual quad core processors. Both are running Android 7. Both have the 32 gig of storage. Both have Bluetooth 4, USB Type C connectivity, GPS GLONASS. The cameras on the back of them are both 23 megapixels, so nice high resolution cameras there. They do differ slightly on the front cameras, so the XA1 has an 8 megapixel camera on the front compared to the XA1 Ultra's 16 megapixel camera and the front firing LED flash that you'll actually see here as well. Um, in terms of the battery life, the XA1 has a 2,300 milliamp hour battery compared to the 2,700 milliamp hour battery that's built into the Ultra. Obviously, they're sealed batteries, they can't be removed. The XA1 weighs in at 143 compared to the 188 of the XA1 Ultra. And in terms of price, the XA1 uh, has a retail price of £229, including VAT, compared to the £329 of the XA1 Ultra. So that's a quick hands-on and uh, comparison between the two. As I said, we'll be coming back with a full review of these two devices to go into a little bit more depth on what the, the differences are, um, explain some of the features that actually Sony put into the device. But both are available uh, to uh, pre-order from clove.co.uk now. But until next time, thanks for watching.